students truly love her. I can see the smile on her face right now. And uh, looking after class one to five, in December 2001, she was promoted to the post of principal of the entire school. She was the first lady principal of Brilla High School for Boys. She truly deserves a big hand. And in April 2018, she was made the director of Brilla High School called Kata. And she's won, trust me, she's been acknowledged and she's won a lot of awards. Let's put our hands together for none other than Miss Mukhtana. Please. And as she comes on stage, I would just like to say, in August 2009, she won the Gurukul Award for the best principal of the year from Lions Club. She was also felicitated by Lions Club in October 2007. And ladies and gentlemen, the list goes on. Ma'am. Our next gentleman. I really call him sweet and from the heart. When I met him, he truly felt like a friend. I didn't realize that he was the man looking out for the institution. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for this amazing human being. Mr. John Badul, of course, he's a seasoned education leader with a postgraduate degree in zoology, development biology from the Pune University and a certification in educational leadership from IIM Kolkata. Recipient of the prestigious D. Rosendo Award 2022, he has served as a city coordinator of CISC IFC examinations while contributing to learning objectives under CISC and MHRD. Mr. Bhattu's journey spans from teaching IGGCSE aboard to pivotal roles as the principal in renowned institutions like South City International School and Malby International School. With global exposure from the British Curriculum International School in Abu Dhabi to South Wales Department of Education and Communities Australia, Mr. Bhattu brings a wealth of international experience. He's a master at budgeting, staff recruitment and academic coordination, fostering a collaborative school culture that inspires problem solving and self-motivation. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Mr. John Bhattu. He has worked as the principal advisor in Defense Aeronautics Research Development, DRTO Bangalore, Space Application Center, ISRO Ahmedabad, for his outstanding contribution in the research and selfless service to the nation. He has been conferred Bihar Gaurav Sarman by the Governor of Bihar, by the former President Sri Ramanath Kovind, and the most prestigious presidential award, Vishish Seva Medal by former President Sri Pranav Mukherjee. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly put your hands together for Mr. Sanjay Kumar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to also call next is Mr. Alokananda Mukherjee. Sorry, Alokananda Mukherjee Miss is a consultant clinical psychologist. She is attached to the Apollo Multi-Speciality Hospital in Kolkata for the last eight years. She is also attached to Apollo Balayant Clinic and a resurrection of mental health nursing home as a consultant. Her area of work focuses on working with children, adolescents and adults dealing with emotion and emotional disturbances, anxiety, depression, trauma, addiction, personality disorder and other mental health issues. She also has special interest in working with patients having post-traumatic stress disorder. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand to Ms. Arokanandla Mukherjee. <laughs> and 
and now ladies and gentlemen to a very hot personality. He is known for that because he makes a difference in lifestyle, he trains you, makes you healthy, happy and happy. Yes, you heard of him, you've seen him write a number of columns and he is known as one of India's first strength and coordinating conditioning coach. Ronaldin Moitra from the National Strength and Conditioning Association of America. He is also a corrective exercise specialist and golf biomechanist. Wow, I hope I got that right. This is truly amazing. From the CHEK Institute, San Diego, USA. Well, Ronaldin's assignment, Cricket Team India 2003 and 5, Football East Bengal Club 2005 and 6, Indian Football Academy 2008 10, Golf National Score 2010 to 2018. Ronaldin runs three corrective exercise studios in the city under the brand name Endorphins. A warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to none other than Ronaldin Moitra. You still look awesome and go get it. How do you manage it? Let me know. Seriously. Now, on to a lady who is going to be sitting at the center and coordinating the entire discussion. Dr. Sukarnia Shorpadakari studied at Presidency College, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Center for Studies in Social Science, and did a PhD from Trinity College, University of Cambridge. She joined the Department of Sociology at Presidency University in 2012. Her specialized research interests are in religion, aesthetics, and the interfaces of philosophy in everyday life. She has been a visiting fellow in JNU, Cambridge, and Oxford, and has published widely in reputed national and international journals and press. She is currently working on a research project on religion and climate change in collaboration with Professor Nitesh Chokravarti, University of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, our coordinator and main person for this evening, I would say, because she's going to handle all the personalities, Sukanya Sarkarikari. Give her a big hand. Children help 
create mature adults. So with that, I'll start today's discussion. As I said, the motivation being how better to enable our future, our children, to be the best version of themselves, to attend to their lives and selves better. With that, our discussions will be oriented around the question of children's attention spans, their attention economies, and the direct impact that has on their cognitive, emotional, and physical well-being. I would like to start by inviting Dinesh Victor, sir, founder of SIB Academy, to speak about the science of attention. We first need to understand what attention is in order to then move on to discussing how that may impact and be impacted in turn. Sir. Thank you. And a very good evening to all the distinguished principals here. So very quickly, I think as principals and teachers for many years, you all would have realized that children can only learn when they pay attention and that's pretty obvious. But just quickly a little bit about the science of attention. Um, see there are, if you look at the brain and the brain how it works, um, any information that comes to us, if we want to really learn something, you need to get into something called the long term memory. So it has to pass through two filters. One is called like, the short term memory and then there is something called the working memory and finally the long term memory. Now the problem with the working memory in our brain is that it can focus only at about four to six things at a time. I mean five to seven things at a time, that's the maximum. So as I said, it is not, not more than three to four things it can focus. But the big problem is the, I mean if you convert that in, let's say you convert that in uh, computer science words, it's about 2.5 bits of information. But if you look at the kind of sensory information that we are exposed to through our five senses at every point of time, it's enormous. They say it's close to 11 million bits of information from everything else. So the key role is when you're working with you can just focus on four or five bits, a uh, 2.5 bits of information. How does the brain handle close to 11 million bits of information? And that is where attention comes in. Attention is the key driver, of the, the key, I would say, the uh, way the brain decides to focus on only four or five bits out of the 11 million bits of information that comes to you. And that's extremely crucial because your brain can't handle more than that information. And that's a famous example of how you can uh, focus on somebody in a cocktail party and listen to them when there are so many other people speaking. And you may have noticed that if you go to a noisy party, you may still have a conversation with someone, in spite of so much of noise happening around, so much disturbance happening around. And that's because of the brain's focus or ability to attend. And only when you pay that attention, it can go into long-term memory, and that's where learning happens. So all of us as educators and people who want children to learn must understand that there's a tremendous amount of competition to gain the attention of the brain. And just to put two other points, uh, the most important thing anybody will focus attention is on basic needs, like someone's hungry, somebody's in pain, they're not going to pay attention. And the second priority once the basic needs are met is urgent needs, like maybe you had a, somebody didn't like your comment on Facebook and that's worrying you, they're not going to learn anything more. So only when these urgent things are covered, you can actually give them something to learn and that can go into long term. Thank you, sir. Um, I do have questions for each of you, but I'll reserve them for later. Uh, we now move on to uh, Mukta Nain Ma'am, director of the Villa High Schools, who would talk about the relationship between the attention economy and education in general. Good evening, everybody. My interpretation of the topic is attention economy, meaning attention good economy 
or bad economy of a country on students as a whole and on education. We see that when the economy of a country is good, the education standards automatically improve. Government, private bodies, all pump, pump a lot of money into education. For example, if the economy of a country is very good, then even the alumni of a particular institution, they are ready to donate crores of rupees. For example, when we talk of universities like Oxford and Harvard, they practically thrive on uh, alumni sponsorships. And even in our IITs and IIMs, we notice that the alumni does a lot. So the economy is very important for education. And we notice what happened when the COVID took place. Suddenly all schools and colleges had to close down. What happened after that? There were layoffs, people lost their jobs, uh, salaries were frozen, all this happened. So that was the impact on education, on students, on the teacher world. At the same time, we noticed that if one is doing very well, then even the government, if the country is doing very well, even the loans are very good in banks. And students can get loans very easily. And the payment method is also more practical. Sometimes they pay back only after they have earned their money and they have got jobs. And of course nowadays we see that technology has a great impact on education. Suddenly things have changed. We grew up in an age with black and white pictures in textbooks. And we did quite well for ourselves. Nowadays with things like augmented reality, where the teacher can bring in a tiger into the classroom, right? Or an aquarium in the corridor. Children are more excited about education. And this technology, this growing economies, all this has a great impact on the attention span of the students also. Because it keeps them more occupied. It retains their attention more. All these factors are important and they help and they ensure also that the economy of a country actually dictates the life of the students. For example, in our rural country, India we can always have to talk about urban education and rural education. Uh, rural students would do far better if there was more technology there, if there was more uh, responsible Wi-Fi connection, if there, were more, uh, there was better Wi-Fi connection there, and things would be better there. So what I feel is that the economy of a country impacts the education and the student life to a large extent. Thank you.